Okay. Um, welcome to Random Thoughts episode 57 today. Yeah. The podcast is live. Thanks for everyone who's been listening. Uh, if it sounds odd or the audio is off, please let us know because we're audio rookies. Uh, yeah. That would be good feedback if you've got any. Uh, shout out to Chris Radford. Thanks for the lovely text uh, about how much you're enjoying the podcast format. That's nice to know that uh, people are getting around it. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, so I thought we could talk about netball a bit today. I think it's a really interesting sport. Yeah. We've been training a lot more netballers the last 18 months, um, and we've learned some really interesting things, I think. Yeah. Um, we can't, so we've, and we're lucky enough we train uh, netballers at very elite level. Um, we can't talk the specifics of yeah. who, where they play because, yeah, but um, interestingly, we had a conversation with, with one of our netballers uh, the other week. And she was talking about the the preseason where they had four soft tissue injuries. Yeah, two quads and two hammies, I think it was, something like that. This is an elite. They've got a strength and conditioning coach. Um, they've got a, training multiple times a week, proper practice games. It's very well structured. Uh, and unlike basketball, it's uh, it's a, like a one team thing. It's not a fractured. It, juniors thing. it's a little bit more fractured. You've yeah. got, you got rep and domestic and sectional and stuff like that. But, but once you start getting into the sort of the mm. 18, 20 age group, it becomes, yeah, you show so play a winter season and a summer season, but only really for two teams, which yeah. is kind of handy. Yeah, so the load's sane. It's quite, it's quite good. Um, yeah, and we started to look at what they were doing for pre-season, and I was astonished um, at how much, uh, what I would call over-distance work they're doing. So yeah. do you want to talk about over-distance and that sort of concept of... Yeah, so we talk about sports specificity a lot in the gym. We talk about you know things like core lift. We talked about a couple of weeks ago. I talked about core mm. lift being dead and the deadlift for vertical leap, for example, and sprinting because mm. it puts you in a better gluteal position. Mm. When it comes to your running work, there's such a difference between acceleration work and top speed work. And then you break down sports and you look at them and you go, well, things like basketball and netball, the courts, basketball courts 28 meters, netball mm. it's 30 meters, thirds are 10 meters each. Mm. Each players really barely get out to acceleration, and so any work you're doing. And this program has... And so, and so to be clear, they're, they're very rarely running for um, more than... Uh, 15, 20 15, minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Because um, what is it? It's 20 metres from the top of the circle to yeah, the from, top. from goal circle to goal circle, it's 20 metres. And each yeah. third is 10. So the goal shooter, if they've run 10 metres, they've stepped out and, of the area. And it's not like anyone ever in the history of the game has gone from the top of that circle and sprinted at full pelt straight through to the other circle because you're actually slowed in earlier. Because so. that would be offside. Because if, if that center then steps into the circle, they're offside, so they have yeah. to decelerate. Yeah. So any work done above 20 meters is therefore in some form over speed training and then they're going outside that specific you know, yeah. mode they're training. And so what you're doing, by, by doing the long distance stuff at a high speed is you're exposing them to a stress well above and beyond what they would be exposed to in the game. Uh, and, with, and high speed running comes with the risk of um, soft tissue injury. It's it's one of the major ways you can you can do it apart from kicking, really. Yeah. Um, and so you want to do enough of it that you're really fast at your sport. But if you do, and they were running like four hundreds. Yeah. So it was, like, I think I woke up was like five one hundreds, four two hundreds, and three three or four hundreds. Like already the one hundreds are too yeah. long. It's and really then you've long. got you got longer than that, not shorter. That was so, crazy. So it got me thinking about what what um, what if we had uh, control, rather than you know training a series of individuals as we currently do if we had control in the same way that I'm the high performance manager for the Melbourne Boomers yep. um, and we do all the Basel Victoria stuff I was thinking what would we do with a, a netball team yeah. um, and I think the first thing would be educating the players parents and coaches about just how unnatural netball is I think yeah from a, from from a, a joint point of view yeah so um, whenever I'm doing a presentation to athletes I, I think it's really important to explain that we didn't evolve to play high high friction coefficient court sports. Yeah, otherwise all our feet would be like the same. The soles of our feet would be like Asics. Yeah. <laughs> like this high grippy traction rubber yeah, soles. We just didn't. And, and so and people people you know when you talk about evolution, um, there's a small subset of people that just get like no, it doesn't exist. And it's like well, don't worry about those guys. But when when you talk about evolution, you get people say oh you know because I talk about it in terms of we can look at the body in terms of its design features. You look at the Achilles, that's an amazing spring. Yeah, designed to propel us and save and conserve energy as we run. Yeah, and that's a, that's a, that's a relatively rare feature that we share with only a few animals. Yep. Um, and you look at the knee, and the knee is, is this beautiful rolling gliding mechanism. But it wasn't designed for these hard cuts with a high grip. It wasn't designed to take those forces. It was designed to do... Force, it was designed yeah. to do... I mean, cross-country running. If you said to me, what sport did we evolve to do? It was intermittent, relatively 
low to moderate speed cross country running with a few sprints to avoid cheaters um, and such. <laughs> but yeah, predators. Yeah, yeah, on, on variable terrain with bare feet or you know minimal shoe wear. Minimal yeah, footwear. yeah. Um, and so the thing, one of the things we're in the in the business of doing is providing upgrades because if you want to play a court sport, if you want to play a sport you weren't designed to do like a, a court sport netball basketball are the big two volleyball is a really big one as well yeah and and i think those those three are the you know there's a continuum of things you know so cross country is the thing we were most designed to do and then if you think of the the furthest away for the thing we were least we're least biomechanically equipped genetically naturally i would argue that's probably netball in terms of the the um, amount of shear force and stress that goes through the knee when you have to do that rapid stop because you're not allowed to... Because uh, of the stepping. Stepping, because yeah. the stepping rule is so tight and the obstruction rule well, and the offside rule, you put those three together, there's a lot of time spent braking and landing to avoid being penalised and, and other... Braking steps. in a way that you just can't do in Beth. If you try to if you try to run fast... We've done a video on this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Um, you can't break in bare feet the same way you can on a high friction court in shoes. And so netball takes the... Basketball's not, not, not much better, but yeah. netball right. further restricts it by the sections, by the thirds, yeah. and by the positions of the players. And then you I mean, have the stepping rule. The just saving passes. grace, I suppose, is that you're, most of them are running shorter distances. So they, don't, they probably can't, aren't often getting up to the same velocities as a basketballer. So that's that bit of swings and roundabouts. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so... They have the highest per capita knee reconstructions outside of AFL footy, and I think that's that's because of of that. Which is it? Knee wasn't designed to do that. When you combine those two things, netball plus AFL footy, Australia is the ACL capital of the world. Yeah. So, good on us. Go us. Um, but yeah, so you have got those high breaking forces and a lot of anterior forces. People trying mm. to land on on one leg type yeah. situation. So ACLs, um, soft tissue shouldn't be an issue. No. Because they're running. Soft I think it should. I think soft tissue should be incredibly rare. Uh, like rolled an- rolled ankles are going to happen. You can do everything you you want to prevent them, but it's still at some point you're going to land gonna... on a foot. You're going to catch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and patellofemoral, like knee wear and tear, is definitely going to be a thing. You can reduce it. I think that's the important thing. Is if you create that structural upgrade where you make your quads stronger and looser through the lateral quad and get that VMO up to scratching and glue meads up to scratch and have a, a, a kneecap that tracks beautifully down the middle, you can really change your patellofemoral. Yeah. Uh, I think you can almost eliminate. Uh, your tendinopathies you know if you apply good isometric program good isometrics good strength good body awareness and control and then be smart about your volume you can get that way down um, and you can dramatically reduce your ACLs so, yeah through so your movement skill work hamstring strength coordination glute med there's, there's, all that stuff. there's heaps of stuff you can do there and they'll still happen like it's, it's same, so same as the ankles you can prevent you can do a lot of work for ankles and then you'll have two and it's like oh what have we done wrong it's like no they just sometimes, sometimes they happen yeah and because it's always land on someone's shoe and, you know um but yeah, so there's tremendous structural upgrades that you can make to make your body better in terms of both the physical structures of the body and also, the, I guess, there's the software upgrades where you can make your body better at Movement control. Movement skill, nervous system control, yeah. So there's heaps you can do, but it seems that the programs we've looked at are either too much, it's this still, it's this persistent, oh, we've got to make you run till you vomit. It doesn't make people, not for a sport, so, so it's, it's a, I reckon it's a hangover from footy. It is, yeah, big time. Because there are football netball clubs. It's That's the majority of how people play is they're part of a footy netball club. And so there's this concept that the boys are running, you know, doing... So formerly the boys were doing gut running and now... So we're in the netball team, we've got to do the same. We've got to make everyone spew like the boys so that we're, you know, we're ready for the season and we're psychologically prepared. It's like, not at the expense of all the soft tissue work. And, and, and netball is the thing is, you know, they can be hard as nails as well. Like there's a perception sometimes of a softness. Oh, but, no. the, but the classic was one of our athletes who got hit by a car. <laughs> she got hit by a car like on the Wednesday and she wanted to play on the... Oh, on yeah. The... <laughs> Hopefully she's watching or listening. <laughs> yeah, she comes in and is like, how you been? Yeah, I'm good. You look like you're limping. Oh, yeah, got hit by a car running cross country. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm going to play on Saturday though. <laughs> Netball is... I've played a bit. It is a tough sport. Yeah, yeah. It is aggressive. It's, it's, it's not... It's a con- different kind of tough. Yeah, yeah. It's not the tackle and you give each other corgi because you're beating each other up tough. But there is a level of physical demand that you have to get your body positioning right. You have to be aggressive. You have to be quick at the ball. And because it's so much short, sharp, chop, choppy change direction, it's a really explosive sport. A lot of a lot of G forces. Mm. Like there's a lot going going through the body. Um, so back. Uh, sorry, can I jump in? Back yeah, to the yeah. running stuff. 
doing that high speed running is not it's going to improve their VO2 max and their anaerobic threshold and stuff like that, but it's not going to improve their joints, tendons, ligaments, and bones and muscles for those G-forces that you just no. mentioned. So yeah. that high-speed running is going to get you very good at running track. Your 400 times certainly going to come down. Your 100 times going to come down. For those that don't get the torn hammy. Yeah. We'll get there in a second. <laughs> but the, you're not going to be able to translate that fitness yeah. into what you're going to be doing on the court, which is repeat really short bursts. So if you're a wing defense, you're going to go maybe three or four sprints, three or four cuts, leads at the ball, and then you're going to rest for 20 seconds when yeah. the ball's up there, and five, 10 seconds, then I'd, you're going to go again. Ball I'd, the middle. I'd be doing a truckload of uh, repeat 10s and 15s and a little bit of a little bit of 20s. I, I like athletes to sometimes run a little bit over the distance they'll need to. So basketball is 16 meters foul line to foul line. I quite like them to run 20 meters sometimes so that they're just, they've got a little more in the tank in terms of they're used to running a little further than they need to run. Um, but yeah, I'd be doing a lot more short, sharp stuff and then having some, some change of direction um, into, into the mix there. I think you could do that and you could get crazy fit, ready. You could still tick the box of it being hard uh, and feeling like you're going to spew a bit. And that so box sometimes repeat needs to... sprints will be linked below. Or, or yeah, above. great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the stuff that I think would really be very safe, vastly more effective um, and give them the condition, not just in the heart, lungs and the metabolic um, conditioning, but also actually conditioning through the tendons, ligaments, muscles, joints. Yeah, joints. yeah. Because um, ne- in netball, soft tissue should not be a thing. So if, just, yeah. if a netball came to us and said, "I've done my hammy or I've done a calf or a quad," it'd be like, "Are you yeah. sure you were a netball? Like, are you yeah, doing something just, else?" And then they go, "Oh, yeah, I was yeah. doing some running." Because yeah. even in basketball, because they spend so much time in that low wide stance playing mm. defense, there's a lot of groin load there. Mm. You don't even get that netball. Yeah. Netball is even better in that sense when it comes to mm. soft tissue. Yeah. So they should be immune. It should be the occasional ankle and you know, knee prevention and care and, the, and really should be a big and, injury concerns. And the other, and so that's, that's the thing they got, they're getting too much of the wrong vitamin. That's it. And, and there's the missing vitamin of, of strength. Uh, at the very elite level, they address this beautifully. Like their girls are very strong, explosive, great athletes. Um, but it, it doesn't have the culture of lifting. That's partly a, a guy girl thing. Like Aussie rules, rugby, gridiron, to a lesser extent basketball. There's a culture around going to the gym, lifting weights to be strong and explosive for your sport. It's part, of, it's part of what you do to be great at your sport. It's part of your weekly schedule, yeah. Um, and I think at the pointy end in netball, they're, they're really good at that. Yep. Um, but there's this whole other, particularly in juniors, where it's just not the, the done thing. And what's been great for us is our girls that are lifting and doing our program are very dominant amongst their peers because they've, that, yeah. they've got like a 30% you know, strength reserve. supremacy or strength, yeah, strength reserve. reserve. So yeah. Everything they do compared to their teammates is just easier. Easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the program that I would do would be very similar to what we're doing. I don't think you would actually make a, uh, you know, it'd be glutes, hamstrings, glute med. Yeah. Um, you'd maybe even dial glute, that up even glute more. Glute med central. The glute med video will be linked with this as well. That's Great. vital. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd probably be... Uh, attacking the hammies even even more because I think if you just get that brute strength and not about not about preventing hamstring injuries because if you're doing the intelligent running program you're not going to need that's not going to be an issue anyway inoculation yep. from hammies is not an issue but I think just from a, a hamstring co-contraction to support the ACL and so decelerate the tibia yeah yeah because um, there's so, direct really cool stuff there's direct fascial links between your hamstring fibers and your actual ACL yeah it's the anchor for the... So if you haven't heard that from us before, it's the anchor for the ACL. I think it's really important to be across. Yeah. Um, and I think, so I suppose summing up, mm. um, shorten up your speed work. Yep. Get it actually sport specific, 10s, 15s, yep. 20s. Um, if you want to repeat them and do them in, with shorter rest, that's how you get your conditioning work. Um, and then your, your small side of games and drills mm. is a good place to get conditioning as well. Um, ankles, glute med... Uh, I think a really good place to start would be the warm-up 2.0. Yeah. If you don't have access to a gym, if you just... Yeah, that'd work great, kind, wouldn't it? Kind of a strength workout. In, yeah. in a very low sense. If you just started doing that. Roll, stretch, activate, some yeah. squats, um, the anti-ankle workout, some of the glute med work, which mm. will all be linked with this. That'd be great. It's going to have a ton of resources. Yeah. Um, and start there. And then if you've got access to mm. it, something a little more pointy yeah. end once you start getting into a gym and start lifting some and, and, and in between that, there's still that idea of, um, I mean, yes, what we're doing here is bespoke. It's customized for every athlete and, and the sport and intensely supervised so you can push and get a lot better. But there's probably a middle ground too where there's, um, so there's the warm 2.0 where you get that basic biomechanical Just competency. Come back to level, level one, step one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the top level. And then there's also do um, four sets of uh, 10 squats superset with some arabesques and a straight leg hamstring bridge. bridge yep. 
you know, and a bit of calf raises. Like you're, that's still and some core, some planks or some push. Yeah, yeah, that's still placing you way ahead of the majority of your peers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Cool, cool. Uh, lots of resources. Yeah. yeah, there'll be a ton of links in the show notes and, on our website. And chuck in your, the new resources document as well with the the yeah. PDF. Yep. That's, I think that's phenomenal. I'll link yeah. to that as well, which has got even more resources. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs>